Hello, my name's Sam. I'm an illustrator and an artist and a storyteller and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today to do these little mini PD sessions with you on visual narrative. So I guess visual narrative is a bit of a big scary term but basically we're going to be talking about constructing a story with pictures which is one of my jobs as an illustrator. I thought I'd better introduce myself and my work a little more thoroughly. Uh, I am an artist and an illustrator and a teacher. I teach at university um, and here is some of my own work. This is a personal series about my response to lockdown for coronavirus. Uh, I do quite a lot of um, self-portrait work in my personal work. Um, and I just wanted to capture that feeling of having the ground pulled away from under us and tumbling and falling and struggling and then kind of leaning into it. And um, even though there wasn't really a rhythm, at least enjoying parts of the fall and enjoying the view. And then these next little um, cartoony ones are from last year after I had my baby I was exploring a lot of the big emotions that we were both feeling in this little cartoon series. Uh, in the last year I've really uh, changed and started doing a lot more digital work. Previously most of my work was done with inks and paints but I was trapped underneath my baby for a lot of her naps and I only had one arm free. It's actually very hard to paint with watercolours with just one arm when you're trapped in place. So I started using my iPad and Procreate and an Apple Pencil and I've been really loving the results that I've been getting. I do a lot of daily drawing challenges. This is one that's in October called Draw Halloween, and every day you get a drawing prompt. Again, a great activity to do with your classes. Do a quick drawing in response to a daily drawing prompt every day. Um, and I can't remember exactly what the prompt was, but I love this little character and her grandma that appeared on my iPad, and I think I need to write a story about them. This is one of my books, it's Story Ride. It uh, was about riding your bike in Fremantle from the beach to the park. It was actually printed as giant stickers on the bike path so you could ride along and read the story with your family. Uh, it was a really fun, exciting project and I got to spray paint all over the footpaths of Fremantle, which was a super great thrill. This was my first book, Stinky Socks. It was written by a class of children in Victoria and I used a lot of my own um, life experiences for this illustration. So this bedroom was basically my bedroom as a child in terms of its messiness. Whenever my mum would ask me to clean my room I would pretend I was a bulldozer and just shove everything underneath the bed basically until something got left behind and I got in a lot of trouble for it. And then this next illustration um, while I was illustrating this book, my cat knocked a jug of milk off the table and very excitedly started licking it all up. So I snapped some photos to use as a reference for this page. I do large scale work as well. Uh, this is a mural that I did with a group of year six students. So we did a series of drawing workshops using um, taxidermy specimens and they also went and did a visit to the river center and I sketched up the outlines, I did the background and then the children painted the rest of it and I think it's pretty magical and uh, I really love this project at the Riverton Library. This is a mural I did in Corrigan for the RAC all about traveling safe and then this last one is another collaborative project with children at the Fremantle Library. Again we did a series of drawing workshops together beforehand and I used their drawings to inform my sketch on the wall and then they came in and did the painting which got pretty wild at times you do have to keep an eye on them but one of my favorite additions is the giant grin on the whale which was not in the plan but when I had my back turned it suddenly appeared. This is another series of drawing prompts uh, I'm not taking part this year but last year I did and it's called mermaid where you draw a different mermaid every day exploring different emotions and body shapes and how the face and the body 
can show emotion and color can as well. So we've got the joyful yellow mermaid and the deep purpley blue mermaid showing different ends of the spectrum. Then my electric witch mermaid for fun and this little cutie as well. And what am I working on now? Well, I'm taking it a bit easier this year and I'm working on illustrations for my baby. So these are illustrations for her songbook of songs that we sing together. And I'm also doing an alphabet book. So we've got anglerfish, bear, crocodile, and deer. The next one is electric eel, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, so hopefully by having a quick look at my art, that gives you some idea of what my interests are as an artist and who I am. Let's move on and uh, make some art together. We're going to start with a bit of painting. So you're going to need to get together something to paint with. Uh, if you don't have paints, that's fine. It's actually better if you don't have paints. What we want is something inky. So you could use ink. For example, I've got a little pot of ink here. You could use food coloring, which is a really great um, substitute for inks and watercolors. You could even use a cup of coffee that's gone cold or a cup of tea, as long as it's not a milky one, because the milk kind of smells a bit strange. So I'm gonna give you a second to gather together your materials and I'm gonna do the same. And we'll meet back here and start making some art. All right, everyone, I've gathered my materials. I've got my ink and my sticks and some brushes. Off to the side here, I've got a jar of water. I've also got some paper towels and stuff for cleaning up. This is not a exercise in perfection. This is about just losing yourself to the lines. So I want you to choose any brush that takes your fancy, dip it in the water to wet it and get it um, ready for painting, dip it in your ink or your um, food coloring and just start by making some dashes wherever you want on the page. Dash, 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 like a little line of ants marching across your page. Dash, 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 dip into your ink again. Now we're going to do some snail shells. Swirl, 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 swirl. Notice your bristles. What's happening with that brush? Are you getting a thick line or a thin line? Teeny weeny little ones. Do a great big snail shell. Now I want you to get some more ink on your brush and do the tiniest dots you can, like the freckles on a fairy. Dot, 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 dot smaller dot barely pressing your brush onto the paper dot 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 so delicate so gentle dot 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 now put that brush into the water set it aside and choose another brush dip it get it ready for painting into your ink or paint or food coloring and a big thick line pressing firmly and go 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 until you run out of ink dip it again do the same going the other way across the page go 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 thick line thick line running out of paint getting scritchy scratchy scritchy scratchy now dip and wipe your brush and we're going to do dots dot 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 dip it in again now we're going to do zigzags, like a mountain range. Zig, zag, 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 into the water. Get your stick, dip it into your painty, inky stuff, and just do the longest line that you can until the ink runs out. Oh, this line goes on forever and ever and ever. Oh my goodness, it's still going. What a long wriggly line. Oh, I ran out. Dip it in again. And this time I want you to do a wavy line like the sea. Wavy, wavy, wavy. 
you might like to try the other end of your stick. And this time we're going to do crisscrosses. Crisscross, 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 crisscross. It's totally okay to go over the top of marks you've already made. Crisscross, 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 crisscross. Okay, put your stick aside and get another brush. Get the biggest brush that you've got. Get your big, big brush, dip it in the water, dip it in your inky, painty, food colory stuff. And we're gonna use the side of the brush. Side, side, side. Get a really wide line. Side, side, side. It's so wide. Dip it in and little tiny lines all lined up next to each other. Line, 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 line. Like you're doing the fur on a tiger. Line, line, line. Okay, set your big brush off to the side and get one of your other favorite brushes that you've already used. And this time, I want you to draw a happy line. Do, 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 do. Whatever you think a happy line looks like. And now an angry line. Mm, 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 mm. Angry, 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 angry. Mm, mm, mm. And then a sad line. A sad line. Sad, sad, sad. Sad. And a silly line. Blah, 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 blah. Now, with your brush, I want you to press it firmly on the paper. That is the widest line you can get. Lifting up, lifting up, getting thinner and thinner, still dragging the bristles. How thin can you get that line? And then press down, lift up, press down, lift up. Thick and thin and thick and thin. Now we're going to do little flicky lines. Press, flick, press, flick, press, flick. Flicking away from us, press, flick, press, flick. Press, flick, press, flick. Press, flick, press, flick. Press, flick. And now I would like you to write your name with your brush, as big or as little as you would like. Then I would like you to get your stick again and dip it in your inky painty stuff. And I would like you to write your name backwards with your stick. Hmm. 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 Ooh. And last but not least, I would like you to use your stick to write your name in teeny tiny letters. Oh, I think I can go smaller than that. I can go smaller than that. Smaller. Keep getting smaller. Smaller. Smaller, 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 smaller. And that is 100 lines. Don't you feel ready for any art adventure now? Alrighty, let's play the scribble game. It's really easy. It's great to play with a friend or lots of friends. The first step is you need to make some scribbles. <clears throat> so the idea here is that we're making a closed shape. Any shape that you like. It can be round and curvy. It can be ziggy zaggy. Whoop, there goes my camera. Um, but you have to make it meet so that it is all closed in. Then, once you've filled your page with shapes, it becomes very fun. So what we have to do is we have to fit a character inside of these shapes. <clears throat> it can be any character you like. It can be an animal or a human or a magical creature. But it can't go outside of the shape. So that's the challenge of the game. So you are allowed to turn your paper around and look at the shape from all different angles. Let's start with this funny one here. So 
this is kind of reminding me of a beak and then this could maybe be some legs so let's um, put a little shape in there mm -hmm -hmm. curve like that and now this bird's gonna be a really funny shape let's give it a funny little tail and I think I'm gonna fit both of the legs into this bit Those toes are stretching down. I'm going to give this bird a big silly eye. And a little tiny wing. And this bird is going to be laying an egg. And that's how I'm going to use up that space there. Okay, let's think about what space to use next. I reckon this one here looks interesting to me. So, hmm, we could put a head up here. We could have the legs stretching down. Or we could be really tricky and curve a creature like that. Um, hmm, what creature has that kind of a shape though? Maybe a crocodile. So I'm going to start with the head down here. I'm going to curve up and around. Oops, I went out a little bit. That's okay. That was an accident, not on purpose. And then we'll give this crocodile a big open mouth and a little leggy. And we'll curve around again and give the other little leggy and then this awesome tail stretching down some eyes for our crocodile so these are not meant to be perfect drawings the sillier the better usually it's just to warm up our imaginations and warm up our drawing muscles one little crocodile and this shape here is really funny because this could be a nose Oh, what else could it be? Oh, I've got an idea. If we put a head here, then we could do a creature with lots of limbs. So one, two. The other two are hiding behind the back. And this one's gonna be a sleepy one. Um, we're not aiming for perfection. It's um, about having fun with your friends and making up silly characters. And as you go, you can chat about these characters. Um, do these characters know each other? Are they in the same story? What happens to this egg here? Does it roll away? And then the crocodile gets to look after it for a while, gives it a little cuddle, and then it rolls away and rolls into the ocean. And the octopus looks after it for a while. And then, oh my gosh, I can't believe how well these shapes have worked out. I swear I didn't pre-plan it this way. Then something could crick, crack, crick, crack, crick, crack. Crick, crack, crick, crack, crick, crack. Great game to play on your whiteboard and get the kids to suggest things for you to be drawing. You don't need to be a good drawer for this game. Um, it's just getting the idea down. Um, I guess we've got a little bird hatching out of here, seeing as that bird laid this egg oh it's a very startled looking bird mama so you can see how quickly i sketched out all those ideas it's a really fun warm-up game for an art class or a story class or just something um to have a bit of fun with so i'm gonna let you have some fun with the shapes that you've drawn the creative challenge theme this year for Awesome is Tell Me More, which I think is absolutely spectacular and will give you the opportunity to have so many wonderful conversations. Sometimes though, people don't really feel like talking, they don't want to share, they're feeling a bit shy. So this is where a little bit of playful object poetry, no, object puppetry. Although object poetry sounds cool. Somebody do that. That sounds really, really fun. Um, so object puppetry is where you just gather up a whole bunch of objects or get the kids to gather up a whole bunch of objects and you're going to put faces on them. So I have my trusty paintbrush here and I've put some blobs of blue tack on and I've pre-drawn some eyes. I'm just going to press these on. And a little mouth because, of course, we want to have a conversation with this rather wacky looking um, paintbrush now and we're going to ask them all kinds of questions so uh, hey paintbrush buddy how are you doing today yeah, yeah, 
pretty good, I'm pretty, pretty good. I got a new haircut today. It's, it's flash, it's really nice. Can, can I touch it? Is it? Whoa, it's so soft. Um, and basically you're gonna encourage them to either have a conversation with their new object friend or to have a conversation with each other. So you might like to um, get them to brainstorm some questions to begin with. So things like, hey, Painty the Paintbrush, where do you live? Um, I live in a castle. I, I'm sorry, you live in a castle? Tell me all about it. Uh, or things like, uh, Painty the Paintbrush, who is your best friend? Mm, you. Oh, thanks, Painty the Paintbrush. Uh, what's the bravest thing you've ever done? What's the naughtiest thing your pet has ever done? What's the best party you've ever had or been to? What kind of weather do you like? Do you like it when it's stormy or sunny or full of rainbows? Um, have you ever been chased by anything? My brother was chased by a duck. Let me tell you about it. Um, and from this, hopefully, you'll get little gems and nuggets of ideas for story starting to arrive. Um, whether you're telling a story verbally or you're writing it down or you're trying to convey something in pictures, it's often great to start with something that you know, which is why having a conversation or getting someone to have a conversation for you is a great way into your storytelling. Now, with storytelling, some people are quite naturally very gifted storytellers and they love to have a chat and a natter. Other people, not so much. And when I'm doing my storytelling sessions with schools and with big groups, I'll often encounter kids who are either so excited the idea falls out of their head or are so nervous they can't connect with an idea. And I think in those instances it's really nice to have something to prompt them and start them. So we've had a look at our friend Painty the Paintbrush. A technique I use all the time is what I call my magic pop sticks. So I have a collection of coloured pop sticks and on these I have written different things. So on my green pop sticks I have locations, on my yellow and orange pop sticks I have types of characters, and then on my blue pop sticks I have adjectives and describing words, and on my pink and red pop sticks I have things that can go wrong in the story. So to get a story started, I'll get kids to lucky dip these out. Let's do that now. So our story is going to be set in a haunted house. Ooh. Gosh, it's so spooky! Our first character is gonna be a wombat who is clever, excellent, and you need more than one character for a story to really work. Um, most times, oh, we've got lucky it's a koala who is strong. Sometimes these come out really strange and weird, and the problem in their story is that there's a big storm. From here, I would do some brainstorming, I would sketch out my little characters, and then I would sketch out an idea for a haunted house, and then I would get the kids to help me with the story. So I would start by describing the characters, they help me um, draw them by giving me suggestions for what they're wearing, what their hairstyle is, um, whether they wear glasses or hats or jewellery, how tall or short or fluffy they are. And then I'll start telling the story. So Wombat and Koala were at home in their lovely cozy haunted house one night when they heard a huge boom crash and all the lights went out and the rain began to thunder down. Then I'll pause the story and get suggestions from them as to what they think should happen next. The crazier the better. I always feel like it's better to have kids exploding with silly, crazy story ideas and then kind of dial them back a bit, pull them back in, um, than to have a really dull story. So at this point um, in the story, all the lights have gone out and poor Koala and Wombat are in the dark. So I would ask for suggestions, what they do next, how do they get a light, where does the light come from, what are they going to do that there's no lights, and there will be suggestions for things like candles, go get mum and dad, um, ask the ghosts to glow in the dark, 
that's a great idea. So they get the ghosts to start glowing. And then they have to go find out why the electricity went out. And the electrical box is in the roof, in the attic. So they have to climb up the stairs, lots of misadventures there. Um, they get to the top of the house and they look out the window and the reason there's a big storm is because there's a giant outside who's crying and the big crash was that the giant sat on their house. So I like to make the problems more and more ridiculous, just get bigger and bigger and then the kids responses get bigger and bigger as well. So these pop sticks are a wonderful starting point.